uh, really showing us a full repertoire of strokes. And Pavel is no uh, easy match, though, because uh, he himself has got a terrific backhand, very strong, but above all, he's a far more confident player now because of his all-round ability and his recent results. So, let's uh, see the two players then. Andre Pavel and Roger Federer. Already through Arazi and Henman and Enquist. The winner of this match to meet uh, Toman or Lepenti. Hewitt Vinciguera later on tonight. And also later on Bastel and Herbati, the winner of that, to take on Thomas Enquist, who we've seen just taking out Jerome Goldmar. And uh, actually live while you're watching these pictures, <laughs> Swedish uh, efficiency, not quite what you'd expect it to be. We've had uh, a bit of a delay, then the music has come on, and uh, the lights have been dimmed, and the players should have been out there, but maybe they've lost their way in the dark, because uh, we haven't seen either Pavel or Federer. But there's a confirmation of the guys who are through to the last eight. Quarterfinals, of course, tomorrow, semi-finals Saturday, and the final on Sunday. So here is Andre Pavel, 26 years old, born in Romania, now living in Germany. Around the hospitality areas and already inside here will be around 8,000, at least a couple of thousand more than we've had in the wish. Concentrated a lot on Federer, but Pavel is a big talent himself. Oh, he is. Uh, we've seen him uh, quite a bit over the uh, last couple of years, and uh, he's proved uh, a real threat to some of the big names, and Federer quickly becoming a, a big name. He almost seems to lift his game depending on who he's playing against. And that backhand of his uh, is a shot to really admire. A good all-court player. Doesn't mind indoor tennis. Pavel, age 26, ranked 26. Federer, age 19, ranked 32. But his ranking will go up. It's uh, kept on going up in the last few weeks. And uh, I'm pretty sure by the end of this year, he'll be in the top 20. And I think he'll be in the top 10 pretty early on next year. Third time in uh, Baal. Got to the quarter-final last year, Henman beat him. And he'll be happy he's avoiding Henman here. They could meet in the final. I suspect they might. What a match they played in Vienna. And it was uh, here in Baal a couple of years ago that Federer came up against Agassi. And even though Agassi beat him reasonably comfortably, he scored. And Agassi doesn't... Uh, Offer praise lightly. He said that this chap Federer's got a real presence on the court, which undoubtedly he had then and has now. Well, they met once before in Hamburg on clay. Pavel won that four and three, which is a good win. Cedric Mourier of France uh, in charge of this. Interesting that uh, Pavel won this, but of course the, the conditions here are very much suited to Federer. Yes, and I think Federer too, uh, one of my criticisms, negative criticisms in the past, has been that he's just lacked a, a bit of patience, uh, perhaps expects too much of himself, uh, and uh, consequently on clay that can easily uh, lead to unforced errors and uh, the dropping head. Whereas Pavel much more used to going out and battling point after point on a clay court, which uh, Hamburg certainly is. But here, conditions much quicker. The rallies uh, like likely to be pretty short. And where Federer, I believe, has really come on, it, it, it uh, was highlighted last week when he met Richard Krejcik. I thought Krejcik would win the match because I thought Federer's backhand would just not have enough power. Well, he's developed it. He suddenly found it. And we've watched him closely over the last couple of years. And he suddenly found it. And he was able to pass Krejcik much as Krejcik found it that year when he won Wimbledon. Well, Federer, I think, is going to stay because he's always had the shot, he's had the technique. 
It's just that he hasn't had the strength and hasn't had the timing. He's now got it. Yeah, six foot one seems bigger and uh, filling out all the time. He really does have a presence. He's a quiet, very confident. Maybe in the past it's almost been too confident. But uh, as Agassi said, a real presence about him. Harville, a real bull of a man. And he won't uh, lie down here. Been given a bit of a gift with the absence of Norman, and uh, he takes gifts. You mentioned patience, Rue. I, I, I wonder if there are a couple of other things with Federer. The first thing is between the ears. Has he has he got the temperament? On, at the big occasion, we haven't seen that tested yet. And the second thing is work. He's going to have to still put in the work. There's no doubt about his talent. One oh, that's very important because uh, match in and match out, particularly at uh, majors where you're playing best of five sets, you've got to have a fair amount of patience, and uh, even on the quicker surfaces. And uh, you've certainly got to have worked hard at your game to uh, win those matches. One or two of them are going to go to five sets. You've got to have the strength. You can't just rely on talent against uh, other players who are out there working hard all the time. And that, of course, has got to be uh, part of Peter Lundgren's job. Peter Lundgren, the uh, ex-Swedish player who now looks after Federer, it's got to be part of his job is to work him on the practice court, keep him out there. It did marvels for Agassi, didn't it? won the Australian this year because he worked hard in December and was able to beat Sampras in that uh, epic match. Everything here is in Federer's favour. He's in the best form of his professional life. He's got the momentum of some terrific wins behind him. And he's got 8,000 people here willing every single point to go his way. I really do sense this at the moment. He steps out of the shadows and firmly into the world spotlight, but uh, the national spotlight firmly on him right here. Well, he's uh, looked nonchalant all through the week, throughout his win against Tommy Haas, which was top class. Let's see if he can carry on here. to have a nerve in his body. <laughs> so nine aces against Haas. His mother on the right of the picture. Oh. And even the net's in his favour. Yes, really got behind a little flick. Was it going out? Yeah, I think it was. Certainly helped its way in. Broken against Haas, just uh, faced the one break point in the second set. And there's the talent that the Romanian has at his disposal. 40, yes, really good play. Following up uh, his uh, backhand, knowing that Federer was going to be stretched, couldn't hit much power on the volley. in the crowd, they're tuned up for this even more than Federer. Yes. 
normally two shots like that would really affect someone's confidence. I don't think it does to Federer. But it wasn't pretty. So two howlers, but Federer gets through the opening game unscathed. In the last uh, few weeks, Bruno and I have been musing about the current breed of Hewitt and Safin and Federer. Whatever they go on to achieve, I know who I'd most like to watch, and that's Federer. Yes, the parents there. Lynette on the right, uh, South African. And, uh, not sure whether that's a sister. He does have an older sister. Yes, Federer certainly, I think, uh, to my mind, the uh, most classic of the players. Found his timing yet, Pava? Gonna have to be on his toes because uh, Federer likes to give the ball a good crack, particularly on that forehand. Well, this is a sharp sort of backhand, even though he's uh, off balance there. He's able to uh, hit it back rather crisply. Meaty serve, 186 k's. He's a meaty guy. Great-looking shot, but just why well, couldn't quite bring it back. Yes, that oh, other side didn't do the trick. Not showing his qualities there, uh, Pavel. He too, uh, a top junior, won the French juniors. Beat Enquist, whom we've just seen, and uh, the under 16s. 15. Wonderful for the Swiss to have someone so exciting. I mean, they've had some good players, but this guy could have yeah. topped the lot. Fedra and Martina Hingis, I think they're a little spoiled at the moment. Yeah. But in the men's bed, they've had, they've had a lot of consistently good players, Four not a great player. No, that's right. Fedra could be a great player. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think undoubtedly the most talented of their 
home ground players. Hingis uh, originally from uh, Czechoslovakia. Classic from Czechoslovakia. And you're not trying to claim him as a South African player, just to get that straight. <laughs> no, hey. Judging by the way he's received here, uh, onto a losing thing. Okay. I feel happier now. Look at uh, Lynette Fedra. The way you improve it is through the immigration office. It's been done. Yes, well, uh, we Brits have done a little bit of that us. And uh, good on Greg, he's doing uh, really well again. Great to see Rosetsky in the flying form. He just tuned in. A terrific win for Greg. Again, today against uh, Richard Krajcik, following off his good win against Kafelnikov in Vienna. He beat Krajcik 7-5 in the third. He's through to the quarters. Federer always looks so calm and collected. Yes, he can get uh, upset on the court, he, d he does. He's been well controlled, though. He could have got very upset against uh, Henman in Vienna, where he was on top for most of the match. Actually won, I think it was 13 more points in the match than Henman. But uh, he controlled himself well. Got to learn to continue to do that. It's the beauty of an impartial umpire. has a pretty high first serve percentage power wall, and of course that could uh, just nip any of uh, Fedra's shots in the bud. Very good serving. Transformed here. There's a real buzz around the court now that the uh, arena is very nearly full. Still some more to arrive, of course. There's a lot of hospitality going on, and uh, it's around that time. Yes, that's what he's up against. That's a really quality return. Pavel means business here. And moving well, getting into position here quickly. Looked as if he was going to play the back end. Makes room for the forehand. Lovely finishing touch. So 
Well, we've had high-class tennis this afternoon. It's been uh, much the best day that we've had so far this week, and this looks like it's going to be another cracker. Strange that one of his weakest backhands so far actually produced the error from Pardo. So it's with serve so far. Leads by three games to two. And it's the Swiss who leads three games to two. Back with us. Back with a new set of officials after I don't know how long we've been going, about 20 minutes. And uh, all the officials have changed except for the umpire, Cedric so Moria, he's still with us. Bruce's still with us. So we obviously want to keep the uh, line judges sharp, I'm all for that, but I think 20 minutes of success. <laughs> Hardly got your eye in. Yeah, exactly. Getting the pace of the court. Just like the players. 2-3. Normally, over the last couple of weeks, we've been so used to Federer making shots like that. He will. First the slice and then the whip over the top. Yes, this is a shot he played so impressively against uh, Krychek. The uh, slice return of serve, followed by the drive, going from one action to another, one technique to another, with great facility. Federer's not totally timing it as he has done. I think Pavel's just uh, holding him back and uh, Pavel responding too to the big crowd that's here, the spotlight. Of course, most players love an audience. And I think he's uh, on his toes, sharp. Rosse, the uh, missing Swiss, I think he's uh, injured at the moment, he's ranked just one slot below Federer, Federer 34 in the world, Rosse 35.
Yeah. Campbell just losing his form a little there. Better holding serve. Quite comfortably. Good stats for both Federer guys on serve. Federer serving at 72%. Pavel at 64. So no breaks, no break points so far. It's Federer leading 4 3. Welcome back. During the change round, a chance to look at Peter Lundgren, who was uh, really exhorting Federer, almost as if he felt he was uh, too lethargic. Really pep himself up. He was. Uh, Quiet, but gesturing vehemently to him, but he wasn't at all happy. 3 4. He'd have to restrain himself a bit because it uh, could be construed as uh, coaching. Not allowed in this game. Except in Davis Cup, of course, when the captain can do it. Hasn't happened much in recent years in the British Davis Cup team. But I know what you mean. It's allowed. Yeah, they sit on court. Well played. Gorgeous volley, because that was hit a ton, wasn't it? Incredible. Yes, wasn't that uh, control personified that knew exactly what he was doing. It's the advantage of keeping low at the net. You can really judge whether the ball's going to miss the top of the net or even hit it. <laughs> First you uh, don't succeed while well, he tried again, he's still at the top of the net. Why the uh, the magic isn't there? Still doing enough behind his serve. Forty. And there's his second ace. His game is not quite as good as the build up I gave him. He's hanging on to his serve very easily. Federal, it's by five games to four. Maybe the occasion is restricting him just a little bit at the moment. I'm sure it will come. 5 4. In the opening set. Welcome back. Andre Pavel serving to stay in the first set here against Roger Federer. Big shots are just missing. Yes. Something about uh, Pavel's serve he can't quite fathom. Pavel's lost the princely sum of two points on his serve in the whole set. Cool, 
And that high percentage that I was talking about last year, he averaged nearly 70 percent. And oh, he's doing the same here. He's into the 70s first serve, and he's not exactly holding back enough. Just restricting Federer. That's the better shot he's played. Stay down low. Gorgeous pass. I love the ease with which he does it. It's if he's sort of reaching across and picking a flower. Maybe that'll start him off. It's still a very difficult serve to read. And Pavel, yes, he's up for this all right. Yes, he knows he's overcome a bit of a barrier because uh, the players tend to just raise their game at situations like that. He's got a chance to win the set if he breaks her. Uh, Super shot from Pavel. Oh, this is magnificent. And Federer did well to pick it up. It was so low, but there was so much control and spin on this to create the angle. real chance against the serve first double These two guys have probably got the best backhands in the game. Can you think of anybody who's got better backhands than these two? No, not too many. Henman, I think, has got an outstanding backhand because of the variety on it. Probably just rushing those forehands a little bit, getting uh, perhaps a little over excited, Pavel. A good resistance by Fedra. from Federer. Chance from Pavel, but uh, Federer had his first difficult moments there and reacted extraordinarily well. And uh, a lot of relief amongst the applause here as he goes 6-5 to the good. So we've had some solid hitting, terrific serving, and uh, one or two wondrous moments. Here it's 5-6, second time then Pavel serving to stay in the set. Oh, 
Yes. What a shot. <laughs> it was comfortably in. And again, a very good return. And now the uh, ball on the other foot. Now it's Pavel who's got to recover from Love 30. First time he's lost two in a game. Strong stuff from the Romanian. 15, yes, particularly as it was all done with the forehand. Not that there's anything wrong with it, but when you're trying to force in the forehand, you can just let your technique go awry. So many good backhands, and that wasn't the time for his worst. Set with the net, but Harbour kept his cool and rifled it home. Yes, despite his time here, the net court afforded him that opportunity. Really, and he's missed three first serves in a row, which, by Pavel standards, is dangerous. Oh, fantastic! Your edge to the match now. And a timely ace, his second. in the best of spirits going into that breaker because for the first time he had a little opportunity there couldn't take it yeah sure did Pavel trails 12-15 uh, in tiebreakers and Fedra too is in the deficit 13-14 took that four No doubt, a little bit of pressure because the serve is just not uh, delivered quite as it normally does for Pavel.
he got it back. Terrific sight though, that powerful backhand. Full blooded. So he's 4-1 uh, down, but only a mini breakdown. Federer just dropping the return a little short, but all credit to Pavel for being courageous enough to take the early ball and get in. First serve, still not what it has been. I wonder if Federer might just remember how perhaps he lost the match against Henman. A lot of second serves, another look at the parents. And he didn't quite take enough, I don't think, on the rise and come in. Fantastic. I rallied at everything. Power, angle, speed, and composure when it was needed. Yes, <laughs> particularly seeing the crowd were getting involved. And again, a wonderful resilience from this Romanian. Second shot from Federer. And this tiebreaker has been excellent. In. It's an outrageous shot. Federer thought he'd covered it, but he hadn't quite. And Federer's run was difficult because he's playing his best shot and he's hit it with a lot of spin, so uh, Pavel had to be very, very careful. Threw caution to the wind in the end. On the line, he was two breaks down and now he's back level on breaks, 4-5. Slice did the trick. It seems elementary after what we've seen, doesn't it? But it took it. And he's back in the driving position again. Two set points. The first on the Romanian serve. But it looked innocuous, the little slice, but it gave so something very different for Pavel to look at. Magnificent play from Roger Federer. Well, it may not have been the vintage Federer I was describing for much of a set, but it was pretty good. They missed it, and we've missed them. But uh, Federer, wow, that was some finish. Magnificent choice of shots. Sometimes when you've got all the shots in the book, you can bring out the wrong shot at the right time. But just the perfect lob from a defensive position puts himself immediately into the attack over the opponent's head into the net, which is uh, advantage point number one. 
So a, a fine first set and it goes to the Swiss on the breaker. So the crowd really cheering him on now. A terrific end to that set. Pavel hardly deserves to lose it. Ground strokes are getting better and better. Both feeding off each other's timing. We're back into his winning ways in terms of heavy first serves, and they are that, and getting them in. Oh, yes. He's got a terrific temperament, hasn't he, Pavel? He was seemingly getting outplayed in that tiebreaker, and he came back. He's lost the first set, and then he produces a fine service game and one of the shots of the match. Yeah, he's got uh, really good qualities, of course. A lot of uh, inner confidence now because he's pushed his ranking up. He's played some outstanding matches against the better players around. He knows he can do it. Do it. He's got the technique. Never been the fastest man, but he's strong and uh, he seems to have quickened up. And the difference between the first and second sets is that Federer will be playing catch up most of the time. Yeah, he pulled that off. Well, I've made the point before about Federer's uh, game, particularly on the service, that it's so effortless. Good wristy timing, and the volley sometimes is so... Uh, Played with so much ease. Pavel thought that was wide. And uh, just a gesture or a, a meaningful look up at Cedric Moria he did enough. He didn't have to say anything. Third ace for the Swiss. Oh, oh. <laughs> how about that? Just feast on this final volley. That was pretty good. How about this for a Miraculous. Really, the sort of thing you uh, want to see time and time again. We saw some of it from Henman earlier. <laughs> Using every inch of the court is what he is uh, capable of doing. Equally at home.
Third ace of Havel. And took his time having missed the first two uh, serves. Still, the first serve percentages are very, very good. Better is at 73, and Pavel's at 64. It's 2 1 to the Romanian, but he's a set down. Be interesting here to see if Federer continues. He dropped the pace on his serve in the last service game. Got every first serve in. It looks like he might be doing that. Maybe that's one change he's done in the second set. Pavel, just enough pressure. Not too many loop shots, are there? Shots wasted in spin. There's a certain amount, of course, just to control. Yes, there seems to be more measured play about Federer at the moment, doesn't there? He's, he's not missing a first serve. Not going for the big outrageous shots, just working the points through. And again, you've just got to drool over, I think, uh, the way he plays this volley. Look at the ease with which he plays it. And he fed off Pavel's base. What a shot it was from Pavel. And that's miraculous, isn't it? He's amazingly talented. Initially, the defense was outstanding too. Just the, the stab backhand to get him back into the point. And then making his point. Again, fantastic play. How on earth did he pick that up, Federer? And Pavel, for once, was flummoxed because I don't think he could believe the shot that came back at him. No, it was a drive backhand volley. I'm sure it played whilst he was in the air. Incredible. Actually, a half volley. Sorry, you've uh, lost pictures back home. The uh, satellite gone down temporarily between uh, here in Baal and home so you're seeing pictures that have been recorded I can tell you that it's now love 30 and uh, you're back with us now love 30 to all Federer poised to pounce so it must have dropped on the line yes the last serve a double just his second Magnificent piece of retrieving from Federer. And he just seems to be getting to Pavel at the moment. A second mistake from Pavel. He shouldn't have made that mistake. It was a phenomenal return off a full blooded serve. Here are three break points.
well. I was drooling about him before the match started and there's evidence that it's not hype. The guy is a sensational player and uh, right there he proved it and he's 3-2 ahead. I don't know if you can pick up the buzz and well, now the applause but uh, everyone chattering away here. There's so much enthusiasm for this young man. But he seems to carry the weight of it easily. Talking to a newspaper man, they're going to devote a total page to him. His uh, every movement of the day, from uh, dawn till dusk. Not that it would ever happen, I'm glad they don't do that with me. <laughs> They'll have to continue a bit later than dusk, I think. nearly threw everything at that. I said it might have come back. Yes, and it is in, the, in his anxiety to really put everything into it. He just hit a little short. Gave Federer the opportunity. Yes, I loved it. Beautifully weighted in both senses of the way. A terrific second serve, which uh, really kicked, opened up the court virtually like a left hander slicing the right hander wide. It's a court that responds well to slice and to uh, kick. It's so often very difficult to deal with, as Pavel found there. But they'll applaud him. And uh, their man is a game away from the quarter-final. Now it's been about the only blot in the Federer game, the dry volley, the forehand dry volley, which he usually plays so very well. So do most of the modern players. He actually hasn't handled all that gracefully. away in German of course Swiss German Just lovely. 40, and every knee shall bend. <laughs> really weighed into it beautifully. Lovely balance. Like one of the greats. Football. Footfall. 
first of the match. Ouch. Yeah, it seemed to affect him. all going very wrong. It seemed an orthodox game, now littered with mistakes. High standard second set, not in this game, and now it's Pavel who's suffer. At last. <laughs> Fourth ace. Not according to Federer. He was struggling there, Pavel, but he uh, finished it off with some aplomb. And he forces the Swiss to serve out for a place in the quarterfinal. So it's been exciting for the Swiss. Hope you've enjoyed it at home. And the Swiss hope it's shortly to end. It's 5-4 for Federer. Serving for a place in the quarterfinal. We just heard that in the quarterfinal he'll meet Nicola Toman, who we've not seen play. Don't suppose you have either at home. If you have, we're worried. A qualifier, and he's just beaten Nicholas Lepente. Nicola Toman's the name. He beat Escudé in the opening round. He's just beaten Lepente 7 6 7 6. No one can quite believe it, but it's happened on the uh, outside court. The number 7 seed Lepente is out. And right here it's love 15. He needed to time that. And he finishes off so well with that. the killer instinct hasn't it well it's so important to have uh, that ability because you're looking either for a mistake or a mid-court shot but uh, this cross-court forehand of his is murderous ace number four and here are two match points for Federer Oh yes, super that he should finish like that. For me there's nothing more exciting in sport than seeing a major new star emerge and that's what's happening this autumn in Europe with Roger Federer. He's going to be some player, and he very nearly is the finished article now. It's just wonderful, isn't it? So pleased for the locals. So pleased for the family. What a talent. Pavel didn't disgrace himself. A year ago, he'd have beaten Federer. Not today. I haven't been so excited in tennis about a new player since I guess Rios a few years ago when he just started beating everybody in such wonderful style. He's a very different player, Federer, but I think he's going to achieve everything that Rios has and more. Yes, because uh, he's more complete than Rios. He's, uh, he's taller, he's stronger, he can volley so well. He's got the single-handed backhand, he's therefore got the reach. My goodness. As if, as if clocks weren't enough for the Swiss, they've got Hingis and Federer. Stop it. Envy will get you nowhere. So, Federer through. And uh, Tim Henman earlier on today through as well, beating Arno Clermont. And we have the match for you at 2 o'clock British Eurosport time. 3 o'clock elsewhere. Tim Henman against Hisham Marazzi.
Preceding that, Anna Kornikova takes on Tatiana Panova. So how about that? And next, because we're a little shorter here, and this was a cracking match, I can tell you, from Moscow. Elena Dementieva against Martina Hingis. You'll be seeing the uh, close of that match. Uh, stick around for that. That'll take us up to the uh, World Cycling from Manchester at the top of the hour. But uh, a chance now to talk to Federer with Heinz. I'm saying uh, he came here nearly as fast as you were up on the court. Saying, uh, you move well and he's saying yes. I think I'm moving stronger now, my legs are strong. I feel athletic and uh, very pleased with the way I'm moving. You fitness coach is important. And uh, Roger's saying we'll, we'll see over the next few years what a good job he's doing, but uh, I've still got some way to improve. Saying he, he doesn't feel tired or anything. Heinz asking him to define the role of the fitness coach. Exactly what is he doing with him? Saying that uh, he, he drives him to work harder. So while he's young, that's the time to do the fitness work, and after that he can live off his technique. Well, he saw the technique earlier on the scene. So the younger you are, says Heinz, the more you have to do. Better a little embarrassed about that. We'll see, he says. Now, do you know your next opponent, Heinz says? It's Nikola Thoman. So, not surprisingly, he's saying he's surprised. Didn't think he beat Lepenti. Saying that they are almost club colleagues, they played for the same club team for a while. They know each other's game well, and he thinks it'll be very interesting. <laughs> now, what about the fact that he's a qualifier? He said, well, not necessarily a good thing. He mustn't underestimate him. Saying that they've got uh, more rhythm, they played more matches, they feel stronger, they've got. A lot of confidence. Yeah, thank you very much. It won't be easy. And Heinz wishing him all the best for tomorrow. Nicola Thoman, would you believe it? Quarter finalist here in a very strong lineup in Vienna. Confirmation earlier on today Greg Rosetsky took out Richard Krychek. 7 5 in the third. Great day for the Brits. Good day for the Swiss as well. Wisetsky takes on the winner of Hewitt against Vinci Guerra later on tonight. Arazi Henman, don't forget, 2 o'clock tomorrow on British Eurosport time, 3 o'clock Central European time. For an hour off to celebrate, we'll leave you with some highlights of the third day from here in Baal. For now, goodbye.